This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. We are so glad to have you with us. I am joined by Representative Vivian Flowers, Democrat from Pine Bluff, John Burris, former House Minority Leader before they were the majority on the Republican side of the fence there. He is with um, <laughs> Capital Advisors Group now. So good to have both of you with us. So let's you. go. Uh, let's begin with impeachment. It has dominated the national political headlines, at least for the last uh, week. It, it certainly dominated the national airwaves. Um, John Burris, I will come to you first. Mm. Is this just all theater? I mean, it looks like the fix is in, that we already know what the end result is going to be, and we're dancing through a bunch of motions. Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible to feel like the impeachment is theater. That's not to minimize some the seriousness of what's going on nationally. Um, you know, personally, I think Trump made a lot of very sloppy mistakes, and I think in a lot of ways he's been a, a bad uh, commander in chief for the country. I mean, I think he sends the wrong message a lot of times, even if a lot of the things he does, I agree with. Uh, I don't think he should have said what he said on the phone call with the Ukrainian president in the end of the day, though, is it impeachable? Uh, and I think the answer to that is no. I think everyone in the chamber has their mind made up, and that's what makes it theater. Uh, it's mostly sound bites and posturing for future elections and things of that nature. It, both sides, all sides, it, it's just part of the deal. I've had it on television in my office all week and I haven't even taken it off mute because you just know what everyone's saying. Yep. And so they'll vote, he'll be acquitted, we'll have an election and that will determine the future of the country, not impeachment. Yeah, Vivian, your take on that and why do you think the Democrats haven't been able to persuade any Republicans over to their side, if indeed they haven't? Well, I think that the politics um, are playing out unfortunately more so than um, what is right and what is best for the country and I think that uh, more than anything you have a lot of senators who are concerned about uh, what's going to happen in their next race and uh, after being so staunchly supportive of uh, Trump in everything that he does and says justifying and making excuses no disrespect putting your television on mute given some of the outrageous um, actions against our own national security, against our allies, and against um, the law. It just seems to me that the fix has been in. I think um, when you have folks arguing, we don't want witnesses, we don't want information, it's justified uh, for the president's whole administration to um, defy the rule of law and the role of Congress. The fix is in, but I think also the fix is going to be in come election time because America is not um, buying it uh, except for those who are, have their blinders on. So you think it affects swing voters in, a, in some sort of way oh, is what absolutely. you're saying? Because the partisanship is definitely for already sure. kind of baked in. What do you think about that? No, you, I agree. And the reason I'm muted is because I don't need Adam Schiff to tell me what to think. You know, I, I read the primary documents, transcripts, and things of that nature. American people have more access than ever before. And a lot of that is just what makes congressional action theater because they get the knowledge firsthand now. Uh, sometimes from the president in the form of a tweet, um, accurate or not. So it, it just makes everything a lot more routine. I think that President Trump does alienate a lot of swing voters, but Democrats have to win them even if he does alienate them, and depending on who they nominate, they may not win those voters. Well, let's talk about who they may nominate. That's a good segue to our next topic. I want you all to give me your prediction on what you think is going to happen in the Iowa caucuses and... Do you think that the winner of the Iowa caucuses becomes the Democratic nominee, Vivian? I think there are so many um, people who are undecided that it's hard for even pollsters to um, make that prediction. I think uh, on paper, you know, you've got four folks who are leading uh, Biden, um, uh, uh, Warren, Buttigieg, and Sanders. Uh, mostly it's been Biden mm -hmm. who has been overwhelmingly out front in you know the first four pivotal states but I would say that um, probably the big winner <laughs> for the Iowa caucuses will be uh, Michael Bloomberg because while everybody else is spending all of their money and focusing on Iowa and next New Hampshire South Carolina and Nevada 
um, Michael Bloomberg is spending money and laying um, a pretty strong ground game in all the other states. So yeah. given cool. that, you know, these states used to help lead, you know, where everyone else goes, he's already there yeah. um, and trying to so, running commercials. So it could be a five person field after those first four primaries and caucuses. Sure. What do you think in Iowa and in the long run? I think I agree with what Representative Flowers said. I mean, the Bloomberg angle is unique. You're starting to see a lot of chatter about it on social media. And uh, you know, you, you would think his strategy is betting on such a weak field by the time he becomes relevant in later states that he still has a play. And if that's a Pete Buttigieg or a even, you know, an Elizabeth Warren, I think, uh, uh, even though she motivates people, I think when you get to the broader electorate, you, the Democrats are going to want a stronger nominee. You know, on paper, Joe Biden makes the most sense, but poor old Joe just thought he was a Democratic hero, and then he got out here and realized just how much his party has left him. And I don't even know if he's going to win the nomination because of the ideology of the Democratic Party, at least those who vote in the primaries. And so, if it's not Joe Biden, you'd think Bloomberg has a chance, and I, I would suspect that it's going to drag out for quite a while. Every every presidential election year <laughs> in recent memory, we're like brokered convention, brokered convention, whether it's Republican or Democrat. And once again, we start to see that chatter there. Did you want to throw one more? Yeah, one in? other thing I thought that was really interesting too that makes Michael Bloomberg um, such a pivotal play such a pivotal role in this is he announced. Um, where where he is going to keep his money where his mouth is and no matter who the nominee is whether it's him or say biden um he is going to sort of play the role of a third uh candidate by continuing to ensure that the democratic nominee wins in the general so i think that that is super significant as well interesting too he's a former republican moved independent now democrat though so we'll see all right let's move on last issue state issue here we uh we see a new eruption in the i call it the eye doctor battle here because you got optometrists versus ophthalmologists this was hashed out in the legislative session a law was changed to allow optometrists to expand their scopes of practice to some things that ophthalmologists uh, have traditionally done. There's been a lot of litigation towards getting a ballot initiative on for November. This week, the Supreme Court said it should go forward, and then a new lawsuit is filed by the optometrist to block it again. Is it going to make the ballot? <laughs> I'll give you the, the Cliff's note summary there. What do you think, John? I think in the end it probably makes the ballot, and that's unfortunate. Arkansas ranks last or near last in every health care matrix, including access. Uh, the legislature saw the problem, decided two-thirds of the legislature voted to pass a law to give choice to patients. Health care is about patients, not providers. But the medical society in Arkansas has decided that it's worth millions of dollars to try to undo what the legislature did. And it's a complex issue, but in the end, what this uh, law does that's on the books is it brings Arkansas in line with some of our neighboring states with technology, modern medicine, letting optometrists do a little bit of a, a broader scope on minor, oper minor procedures where they're seeing the most patients. We have an access problem. Uh, the legislature saw it, tried to fix it. The medical society is spending millions to undo it. I hope they're unsuccessful. All right, Vivian, you voted for it in the legislative session, so. I did, and um, it was a complex <laughs> process all the way through because, um, you know, it is about patients, and I think that on the one hand, the medical society is, is probably doing what it should in terms of preserving quality and ensuring that the scope of practice game doesn't become something that um, degenerates into an issue of money and who gets paid and how much folks get, get paid. Um, at the same time, you know, I believe that some of the points that uh, Mr. Burris makes are, are important because access is as important to quality um, as as medicine and and uh, and technology. So, um, you know, I voted for it. I would vote for it again. I think at the end of the day, the amendments that were made to it made it. Um, something that will help patients, mm -hmm. but I think that we do have to be very careful about how we examine these scope of practice issues and not focus too much on um, pay and pay to play and uh, versus uh, access quality of care. 
we will be uh, doing a little bit more on this subject in the coming weeks here. I just think that by the time all of the legal machinations have kind of run through, this is my lead in the stories that everybody's going to be kind of cross-eyed by the end of all of this. So, um, all right, Representative Vivian Flowers, John Burris, thank you both for being here. Appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We're back with more right after this.